Fairhaven Planning Board. This is a regular meeting of the Fairhaven Planning Board. Adequate notice of this meeting has been given pursuant to the provisions of the Open Public Meetings Act. At the time of the board reorganization in January of this past year, the board adopted its regular meeting schedule for the year. Notice of the schedule was sent to and published in the Asbury Park Press on January 6, 2024, and the Two River Times on February 1st, 2024. That notice was also posted on the bulletin board in Borough Hall and has remained continuously posted there as required by the statute. A copy of the notice is and has been available to the public and is on file in the office of the Borough Coach. A copy of the notice has also been sent to such members of the public as, at, as have requested such information in accordance with the statute. Adequate notice having been given, the board secretary is directed to include this statement in the minutes of this meeting. Uh, so we'll have a roll call. Mr. Bordelon? Here. Mr. Bush? Here. Mrs. Koch? Mr. Newell? Here. Mr. Paolo? Here. Mr. Rolf? Here. Mr. Nitka? Mr. Anderson? Mrs. Anderson? Mr. Bailey? Mr. Fletcher? Here. Great. Right Let's uh, open the meeting with a suite to the five. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Oh. Hey, Mike. So um, we have no uh, no old business uh, nor uh, any new business, and so we'll start with the administrative items, which uh, is the approval of the meeting of I'm sorry, approval of the the regular meeting minutes from May twenty first. Uh, those meetings were distributed prior to the meeting. Uh, I'd like to just call out if anyone has any comments before we move to uh, approve those minutes. Okay, I'll move uh, to approve the to approve the the May twenty first, twenty twenty four regular meeting minutes. So, uh, Mr. Borland, uh, um, abstain. Mrs. Bush, yes. Mr. Newell, yes. Mr. Paolo, yes. Mr. Ball, yes. Mr. Nicka, yes. Mr. Fletcher, yes. Okay, the next is uh, a review of Bor Bora, oh boy, uh, <laughs> so not doing good tonight. <laughs> Borough Ordinance 2024-07, uh, uh, Ordinance of the Council of the Borough of Fairhaven in the County of Monmouth, amending Chapter 30 Land Use and Development Regulation of the Borough's Revised General Ordinance to comply with newly updated New Jersey Department of Environmental Protection Stormwater Management Rules. And so, um, you know, this is a, um, this is an ordinance that um, is due uh, to go up in front of council um, on July 8th, 2024. Um, I, I didn't have any comments. I, I mean, my sort of expertise in stormwater management is somewhat limited. Um, I, I don't say that facetiously or I mean, it's kind of funny, but it, it, you know, I mean, we, we we all watch the stormwater video, right? Like that's part of the training for uh, for, for the planning board. And, and so, look, I, I think, you know, in, in my limited understanding of, of this, I, you, you know, I don't really have any comments to the to the ordinance. I, yeah, I, I hope, hope for Doug, Doug yeah. to give us a, yeah. I, my knowledge of stormwater is slightly above the press. <laughs> and, I, and I don't by, by way of, you know, what I'm, I'm going to identify what I see as changes, not that I know what the standards are, not that I understand those things. The overriding thing that happens with regard to these ordinances, particularly stormwater, is that the NJDEP pretty much tries to present a uniform stormwater management ordinance and then you know, strongly encourages the municipality to adopt those so that you have some uniform standards. The overriding goal of the NJDEP, as I understand, is to reduce pollutants in stormwater, manage stormwater, take current theories of how to manage stormwater and you know, things like recharge and, and 
basically codify the sum answers. The changes that you're seeing, at least that I observe in this particular ordinance, most of it is already incorporated into the ordinance. I'm seeing a change in some definitions by way of a public railroad or roadway or public transportation entity. Um, there are some significant changes. And, I, and again, I think probably my understanding and speaking to different folks, they always addressed this, but it wasn't necessarily codified in regulation. You know, we're always trying to make sure that uh, stormwater is recharged. Well, there's an exception to the recharge. They don't want and they don't want a conflict of recharging stormwater where that would be inconsistent with approved remedial plan specifically related to contaminated sites. That makes sense. I'm sure that I'm hoping that didn't happen in the past. But now it's codified so that the folks understand what those standards are. There is also some language changes with regard to stormwater management that it's not only just for the 10 year storm, the 100 year storm, uh, but it's also for the current standards, but also what they believe were projected. They are now saying, in addition, when you're doing your homework as to when you're designing things, it's not only for, for current, but what we anticipate and projected are. And they're giving now numbers as to how they anticipate projected to be. Um, hey, can I just stop for a second? Because I remember there was a really good presentation. I can't remember where. That's a big thing with the projected because if you're looking at a hundred year storm, it used to be from now a hundred years back, but now they're looking at what are the recent storms. So then now they're using that as the projected and that sure. makes a very major difference Insofar as the runoff uh, amounts, that, that's my understanding. Yeah, you know, and again, they're providing. They've also it's just something as simple as updating the uh, the website address that was located within the ordinance to make sure that that's current. Um, revising some of the calculations, um, and, and then also, you know, so as I think we've probably witnessed this on, on some of the changes in the, in the regular development regulations that we have. You know, somebody's got something in the pipeline. Some of the rules get changed. And then the, the applicant says, geez, now I got to start from start one and say, well, what this ordinance also does is say, if you're, if give it some pipeline effectiveness, if you're already in the pipeline as of this date, okay, you can rely upon the old. If you're on, you know, if you're not yet in the pipeline till this, now you're going forward. As to the stuff in the middle, you know, we'll do a sort of do a case by case basis so that the applicant has, has how do you define the pipeline? Well, what they've done is they've given you dates. Yep. So the application. So an application and required they, by yeah. ordinance pursuant to be submitted prior to July 8th. Okay. Shall be submitted. So they give you a, a date and a, and a triggering event. So I, I think that's a I think that's helpful to someone who may be trying to develop a site who's been in the middle of developing it for some, maybe two years but they suddenly don't have to start from scratch. Um, again, just by way of not necessarily for the ordinance, but what our role is here, we again have fairly limited jurisdiction with regard to these matters. Our role is set forth in municipal land use law. There's, a, there's also a, a mirrored ordinance, if you will, within our ordinances. I don't have that citation, but the municipal land use law is 40 colon 55B-26. Anything that comes by way of a development regulation or modify it or amend a development regulation impact uh, on any, any development within the municipality. After a first reading, it gets sent to possible review. We act as the, if you will, the, the planning uh, legislative committee for the, for the planning board. But our role is not to approve the ordinance or disapprove the ordinance. It's to take a look at the ordinance and say, is this consistent with the master plan and our development regulations? If it is consistent, we report back to them that it is consistent. If it is inconsistent, we highlight where that is inconsistent. That doesn't change whether or not that gets enacted in terms of what the municipality does. If it is inconsistent, the municipality can modify based upon the perhaps recommendations that we make. If not, it just heightens the vote requirement. Instead of a simple majority, it's going to be a heightened majority. Um, in my review, as I say, you can see that the bulk, the way in which this ordinance is structured, only those things which are underlined 
are presently changing the existing ordinance. I, I think it is consistent with your master plan because we do worry about strong water. We do worry runoff, even when we do a, uh, you know, even a minor subdivision, one of the standards we look to is does this change the runoff in the basin in which the property is developed? So I think it's consistent with the master plan. But if there are any concerns uh, outside of, you know, simply the strict interpretation, I can, you know, usually what happens is I, I ask your permission to put a writing to their accounts and then as to what our conclusions are, and we can share any concerns. I'm done talking now. So. So maybe a parochial question. Is there anything in here that materially changes the burden of uh, on an applicant in town for either residential or commercial development? Not that I can see. I, I, I don't see any shift. I mean, the applicant always has the, the obligation to go forward and make sure that they do their calculations. Our engineer signs off and follows these. But it's the same, it's the same process, the same testing. It's, you know, it's not, it's not, I mean, I know it's again a very parochial question, and I I wouldn't see that in here. But I mean, and clearly it's the same rules for the most part. But I'm just curious. Um, I'm seeing this as a tweak, adding some definitions, okay. and then you know making sure that people who are already starting the process, in the process, don't necessarily get hurt. I don't see much else happening here. I mean, obviously the calculations are changing based upon what they learn, but. Yeah, I don't see much else. Yeah, it's hard. I mean, it's hard to see in the calculations like how much like an SEO for 300 foot in period zone, you know, like what does that mean for you know, it's, it's beyond my can to tell you that yeah. that's where you really do need somebody who does the, what these calculations mean, how they mean. I guess there's a certain, I, I, I am hoping that our engineer is looking at these things and also making recommendations uh, to Mayor Council with regard to these. Um, hoping that the science is correct. Yeah. I could not tell you if it were or not. But, you know, sort of overall, it's probably more conservative than it was, or, you know, it's, it's tightening the regulation rather than easing it. I think so. I, I think that's a fair characterization. And now, on top of that, does Fairhaven's master plan go even further relative to other towns? If the DEP is, you know, seeking uniformity and we're like a, you know, I, I, next to a river, you know, do we does our master plan have uh, an overlay to what I think they set the standard? Thing. And unless they're, I mean, if we want to do something different, I think we, we have an application process for the NJDEP to do that. But usually, it is what they're looking for is uniform. That's why that's by way of analogy, the reason they have the residential site and building standards, the parking stall is going to be this wide. This, so that there, so that if you're a developer, you don't have to have specific knowledge and tailor make these things. You can pretty much rely upon the standards from the DEP. Know when you're going to submit those things to the DEP. They're going to use the same kind of calculations. And if our then ordinances are mirroring that, it's kind of like a one-stop shop. You don't have to go to DEP for something for wetlands and then find out we have a different calculation. Hopefully, everything's going to line up and be done. But to speak to Dave's question, if we decided as a planning board that we would like something more restrictive, we could. I, I think that's that a mayor and the council. Oh, exactly. We can make that recommendation. You, you could make that recommendation. Um, it couldn't be less restrictive, in other words. That that, no. that would be what I was getting at. Yeah. So if we wanted to, yeah. Mm -hmm. When I, I routinely see, you know, with applications with, with regards to zoning board of adjustment, you know, are you looking at dry wells? Are you looking, you know, in this area? You know, you know where it's wet in the municipality. Mm -hmm. Now, if we see a if we see a site plan, I'm hoping that you know when our engineer takes over these things, there's going to be those recommendations and have that discussion. Because even with the standards, you still know. Oh, you yeah, still know yeah. water collects at Smith, water collects here, water collects there. You still have to do some things. Does anyone have any further comments? You know, we just asked for the to prepare a writing to the council. Yeah, I think I'll move to, to prepare a, 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 a recommendation to mayor and council that we have no, no further comments on. That's... <laughs> Thank you.
Uh, no, that, okay. this is our ministerial action. I think the recommendation. So, um, so the third item uh, under administrative items is is for us to draft the the video conferencing policy. So, we we talked about um, as two meetings ago or last meeting that that we agreed that we would have the policy, um, and so it's come time to draft that policy to refresh everybody's memory. We talked about having the ability for board members to um, to be able to um, zoom in or video conference in uh, to to the meetings. Um, there was debate about whether we should afford that same uh, privilege to the public at large. Um, I, I, I know, I, I think some of the other boards do that or the council does it, I, I, I don't know for sure. Um, so it would appear that we do as a borough have the ability to do that. Um, I, so, so I want to have that, you, you know, debate now, or I, I guess begin drafting. I, 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 we can find us the municipality that we could do that. We would have someone here to assist. Yes, it would be me. <laughs> okay. The way that, um, I understand they do it at the council meetings from Allison is that they, they do set up. So you set it up. These are all set up as a webinar. Even this audio recording is set up as a webinar in, in zoom. And it really is like a matter of you know, selection boxes of whether or not it get, uh, uh, creates a link for public access and and that and so on and so forth. So you could set it up the same way that they do, which would provide the link for you to dial in, whether it's a member or the public. The one thing I asked about was um, how they would show documents, you know, anything of that nature. And so the way that that's done is through a screen share where you basically just share the screen. It could get, I, I don't know how you did it during the pandemic, because you obviously remember done I think you did a screen share. Yeah, screen every, share that I, it's, just, it's not ideal for showing plans. No, I, I guess. this is where, so, so maybe we, yeah. should, we should jump right in here, yeah. right? So so I, I know there'll be some debate about this, right? And we should talk about it. It's, it's, uh, I would think that, okay, so we have a policy. Um, we're gonna have a policy. We voted on that and approved that we would have a policy now. I would submit that that policy should be fairly limited. And so that, that if, if, you know, a board member, I, I, I believe that when we're hearing applications, we should make every attempt to be here in person. And as James so eloquently said, we are trying to solve a problem we don't have because we only really got into trouble once and that was in March, right? Where, where some people couldn't be here. Uh, and, and so um, we saw a quorum, but, but my, my, but, but so, so, so I, we're trying to solve a problem we don't have as a board, right? Which and, and so, but I would like to make the the Zoom uh, ability available to to a board member not more than twice in a year, um, and I would argue that that can't count towards quorum. Mm. Um, and, and and so, but that person can, you, you know, question, ask questions, participate in the meeting. And and sort of you, you know be there to provide guidance and and some other, and and help you know ask questions but not not vote. Oh, that was my next question. So yeah. if they're not part of the quorum, then that would mean they uh, could vote then. Right. And my, my so the comparison with the council meetings, they explain that they um, if a council member dials in, they do count towards the quorum. They do, but they okay. cannot participate in the executive session. Okay. Is there legalities between having but somebody speak and they talk? Reach, but not being able to vote. Part of you're part of the quorum, and I, I won't speak to how council does it. It's not my not my view to do that. A meeting, you know, the executive session is part of your meeting. Period. It's just a meet. It's a portion of the meeting that the public is not invited to participate in. Where I have seen it handled in other municipalities, not necessarily. Uh, planning boards. Planning boards present some unique problems, but I have done this with school boards. What they simply do is, if someone is going to be sharing, they simply have a separate dialogue you know, that goes to that member. And then, when when you're you know, when you're off or you're into another room, we have another set up there, and they're simply calling in, and they're on speaker there, and they participate. I will tell you that the that the documents that I drafted. For you were simply designed to allow for a board member 
to participate remotely. It wasn't it wasn't an all encompassing into the public to participate. That's yeah. That that means you can still do that. But what you're going to find is if you're going to allow someone to do that and go back to for those of all of us who went through the pandemic, we require that the documents that are submitted, you know, hopefully they're submitted well in advance. Right. You then have, you know, you upload those, you do then have the screen share to see those things. It's it, never the case though. Yeah, I don't really hear about it. Right. Like the, the documents and this stuff don't get submitted there's going to be far enough in advance. There'll be so. some logistical problems when someone comes in as they often do from the board. I think we can overcome them. You know, by the way, this is just page two and three, but I did a colorized rendering. This is an in-person, yeah. and it, this is an in-person endeavor, right? Yeah. And so, what what we're trying to do is is create a you, you know a safety valve for for certain members sure. to help you know adjudicate the meetings. That's how I I view it. I'm happy to have a debate, and and if, if others have you know we can vote on on what to include or not to include in the final policy. But I, I just feel like it, it, this is an in-person endeavor. You're going to have plans set up. You're going to have all kinds of things. And to put the burden on Sheila or others in the administrative function in the town to worry about how to get plans and maps and everything sort of digitized so that somebody, you, you know, sitting on their couch can, can then, you, you know, fire questions away. Monday morning quarterback style just doesn't really seem to <laughs> ring, ring true with me, right? Like come to the meeting and and be heard, stand up, ask questions, and 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 the like. That's yeah. So I do a couple comments. So I'm, I'm I'm generally in favor of allowing board members to zoom in. I mean, I agree, I think there should be limitations on yeah. voting or forum. We'll figure that out. Um, even if it's permissible, uh, I do think it's it's kind of awkward and maybe even bad form to allow the board members to zoom in, but not allow the public to zoom in. I, I think the yeah. optics of that, but it doesn't look, they're not great. Um, and then I understand the logistics issues around, you know, the detailed plans and everything, but we're not restricting public from coming to a meeting in person if it's yeah. not important for them to see the plans in person, right? We're yeah. just giving them the option and they'll understand that the technology is limited in terms of what they can See. see when they're when you're zooming in as opposed to sitting here and seeing the plans up in front. So just a couple of thoughts. I'm actually going more your way on this. So maybe we make a proposal and see how many people are in the line because I suspect most of us in this last discussion were going towards grabbing your insertion. So if there's some you know limited way to you know limited way or not even doing it like you want to make a policy and see how everybody votes. To... Well, we all so so we so, so we voted to have a policy, right? So so that's been approved, and and we're going to have uh, the ability to video conference in um, to these you, you know to these proceedings. And so now we have to decide with with there Doug were, there how to, how to, just some fine tuning. Yeah, yeah, some some fine tuning yeah. to it. So I, I maybe you can frame for us what we need to decide. Let me try to yeah. try to frame it. Yeah, the way in which it was done, there were some there were. Some open questions. You guys make those decisions. I can make recommendations. Uh, I think, from what I'm hearing, if it is that, look, I really want to be, I really want to be part of this. Life happens. I can't physically be in two places. And the board member says, I, you know, I, I really want to be a part of this application. You're providing an opportunity. That opportunity has to mirror the experience that that board member has as best as it can as to what physically happens here. So they have to be able to hear you, be heard, review what you're reviewing, see those things. I think we sort of knocked that out in pretty good fashion during the pandemic. I think to the to yeah. extent that we did that, we, we got that done. We didn't have any problems during the pandemic that I can recall. The next step is, I, I, I don't think it's, this is my personal opinion, this is my, not my legal opinion. I don't think it's good optics to have, you know, one, two tops, not at that meeting. You may want to just reserve it on the first column, the first serve to one to one individual. Um, and it has to be, we have to know this in advance. You know, it's, you know, I'm assuming most trips or most of those types of things are pre-planned. You can do that. We can, we can set how much notice the chair needs in coordination with 
uh, our secretary to just realize what we're doing is we're now going to put another layer of, of tasking on our secretary to make sure that now this is all uploaded. We have more than one application, two applications, you know, make sure that this is ready to go for the member who's going to then call in remote. So we need to know probably mm -hmm. working with Sheila, how much time do we need to know in advance? That's number one. How many people are we going to allow to do this at a meeting? How many times per year would you permit a person to do this? Are they going to count as corn? If they're going to count as corn, um, then, I, then I think you vote. I mean, I, if, if they're not going to count as corn, they can still participate, but they wouldn't be, I, I don't think you have them vote. Most of this stuff, though, was in the past, it was always a concern that we needed that person for a quorum. You know, in that instance, you wanted them to vote. If you're going to participate and there's an executive session, you're going to have to, again, if they're going to be part of the quorum, my difficulty was saying, no, you can't participate in the executive session. So what if something happens during your meeting where it's like, okay, we need legal counsel. Am I, am I not providing that same legal counsel to the person who's participating in the moment, they're going to be, they're going to be shortchanged. If we're going to do that, I think, it, even if it's just a separate call, I mean, in, in that instance, where I've seen it work is like, look, we did it during, we're, we're not, yeah, we're not, we're we don't need to dial, we call soon, we dialed in, and a separate yeah. meeting, and we got yeah. an executive and back yeah. up doing the bubble. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, and I think if you can do that, and that's not too great a burden, because I, my recollection also, and again, I'm not, Doubting Miss Oliver's talents whatsoever. You recall we had we had the secretary's taking a, a lot of notes, doing a lot of things already. If we had a technical glitch, we had a backup person. I think Joe was our backup person. But didn't we have a, a, a tech person? He was our tech guy. Um, I don't yeah. know if it was backup or, or only tech, tech guy. He's our tech he guy. Was at every meeting yeah. with our board secretary. Yeah. And in that instance, if you're doing those things, this also requires a, 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 a conversation. With mayor and council, because you know, I don't think it's going to turn into big dollars, but but it, there may be if you're going to have a second person here, it's going to be an additional expense. For you, it's here's what we want to do: number of people, how many times, you know, are you going to count as quorum? Are you not going to count as quorum? I'm drawing a blank. I didn't. I, so I, I think we should start with that in terms of of deciding. Right. So, so, because I, I, what, what I, I would think is we, we need to decide how many people we would offer this to um, at a meeting. At a, at, a, at a meeting. And then whether, and then the second vote would be whether to count that person to quorum. So it's already said and done. The public is going to have access, right? We're, we're I mean, in agreement on that. Is, I mean, I guess so we, we should vote on that. We should vote on that yeah. too, right? And I, I and also I think the number of times somebody could. Yeah, yeah. I, we'll we'll go. Right. I mean, we'll go right down. Are, are, you, are you going to try to yeah. do that for every meeting? What do you mean? Public access. That doesn't have anything to do with. That. Oh, public access. I mean, I would think we would have to. Yeah. We would have to avail it to every meeting. You'd have to have public access. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And does that mean the public has the access to video as well? Or? Well, I've, I've seen hybrids. What I've seen is a live stream, if you will, mm -hmm. of your meeting. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, a form, if you wish to call in, there's a, then there's a call in procedure if you wanted to ask questions or participate in that fashion. It wasn't necessarily done by, it was, you could, Witness everything. I mean, right now you could have a live stream of what we're doing, but the person isn't necessarily participating in to the same degree right. as if they were present. But if they wanted to call in, what I've seen happen is then, you know, a second, you know, after everything from like, okay, we've got a waiting list for public participation, we get to the public session, we'll call them in. I see that as separate and apart from what we're talking about with regard to board member participating. If you're going to live, say live stream, and allow for the public to call in. I think that is there a perk to live streaming versus zooming like we did during COVID? There's a, there's a different. There's, they, they hit the raise hand button and you. Yeah, I, think, I think you could do that. The difficulty is if you're can you see sufficiently without having everything uploaded as to what documents we're talking about. It's yeah. one thing. A lot of municipal 
a lot of the boards. It's just a viewing experience. Right. right. It's just it's just the it's you are there experience. So television with the ability to to call in and ask a question, mm -hmm. you know, almost like a you know, dialing. Mm -hmm. Can, can, we, can we bifurcate that? Can we, in, in theory, can we provide the live stream, but not provide the opportunity for people to call and ask questions? Sure. I mean, you can you can just you can just live stream so people can. Right. That's what public access television is. Right. 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 You know, really, when you think about it, that's what that's always been. Both, public access both. You're right. just you're viewing. You're having an opportunity to view from your home rather than have to you know go out to the public. But again, is there is, is there I'm back to solving a problem we don't have? Is, is there a perk to the public to view us live stream if they can't participate or talk or do anything? You know, in, in that regard, like you're saying, just straight up live stream, public viewing. Like if, if, if you wanted to be part of it, wouldn't you show up then instead of just viewing it? Not to I, mention, you, you, you do this you may, see, you, want. you may see something from the comfort of your own home, but you know what? I'd like to be heard on that. You know, but then I don't know what happens if you don't have that set up. I think what I was talking about, I guess I was learning for our purposes is because so often we have visuals, right? So, so often there's like something that somebody has to look at. Um, but I do think it would be a good idea to have like the public be able to call in if we would have whatever documents that had been presented available for the public to access. Does that make sense? It, it does, but what it, you add an additional a layer, layer of yeah. responsibility. Yeah. So basically what you're saying, if every meeting you're going to allow the public to view, to see it remotely, just like in a public access TV, mm -hmm. if you're also going to say you're going to have to, we're going to upload the documents. Right, right, right. That's an additional layer I got of, it. Yeah, yeah. of technical. You might as well just do it via Zoom, man. They would see the same screen share that we're seeing. Exactly. The public. So... But the difference is with the first policy of allowing board members to participate remotely, we're not going through all those machinations for everything. If you're going to do it for every meeting from there on out, you're adding that whole level, even though you may have all your members here. You can follow the distinction. Well, I, I think from the conversation we had last time, right, that we all voted on, like Anna was saying, you know, it's, it's pulling the you know, the screen back and let people see what goes on here. So the way I got it from her and, and the way this got voted on last time was that everybody wanted the public to see every meeting. Oh yeah. Not not just a random, hey, somebody's not showing, let's do it this meeting, but not next meeting. The, the only the only nuanced difference here than say between a mayor and council where you can put on the web every agenda, every document that you have, and that's all self-generated by the municipality, mm -hmm. right? There's a different nuance when you're having to have the applicants council get that to us so that we can then get it. That's, that's 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 what made doing remotely by planning board and zoning boards adjustment different than every other public body. I, I I I like people to be able to see everything that you do. The difficulty is getting access to those documents when you're not self-generating them it makes it a little more difficult. And then the tech person would be the one flipping through, like, so they switch you, you what they were looking at, and then that was on the screen. And we've got a raised hand from, you know, so and so. Okay, you're going to have them probably in sort of the waiting room if that's going to happen. Bring them in, you know, and then they they'll ask their questions. Whatever those questions. I mean, are. it all happens right here. On right, right, right. I mean, I would be monitoring this screen, taking the minutes doing the role and monitoring the hands, and then also I would have to do a screen share. For the documents. For the documents. Sheila, are you able to show, like to flip the camera and like show something on an easel? I think the way that it would work is it would go up on that um, monitor. Okay. Because it because as long as you could like like the quote so unquote what the would happen is I turn these on, mm -hmm. it would reflect this webinar screen and then if I needed to share a document I would have to kind of reduce this mm -hmm. and share a document right which is very cumbersome you know okay. again this conversation is twofold right it's 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 that the public need to see it is there a need for it so on and so forth and then 
the side of one is one board, board, board member for us you when there's two, a need. You've got two things going on at once. I don't want, I'd like to keep them separate as, I, as much as I could. Can we make it easier for a board member to participate remotely? One of those things. If you're going to then allow public to see your see your meetings, that's another that's another policy. It's meant to be a, so so I, I understand your point, like the optics of, of not allowing the public, but yet allowing the board, but like the first. The first order is to show up, right? Like be here. Like it's meant to be a safety valve if there's an emergency. It's not meant to be, hey, I got two meetings I don't have to come to, I can dial in. I get two meetings a year, I can dial in. Like it's meant to be a a a just in case, not a, a mode of, of normal use. And so that's why I I agree the optics are not good, but I I sort of in my head, I'm just like, well, it's still like the primary method of adjudication is to be here in person and participate in person, view the evidence, you, you, you know. Yeah, no, 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 I, I, right? I, I, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, on, the board, on the board member side, I agree. You should have some policy that would allow folks to, to zoom in on the board member side. And it, it does in the optics of it by then not having something for the public. Totally get it, yeah. right? Like, I, I, how, how, if I may ask, how, how do you feel about that as a, as a member of the public? Well, the whole thing is, uh, during a council meeting, it's very rarely that they show any kind of document. If, if we're interested in it, we have to go with it beforehand. Mm -hmm. People who want to see what the resolution is all and stuff. I I happen to get sent everything, but everybody else can just just go on to the website. So and and actually, how did you handle it during you know, the shutdown during COVID? Well, it was on Zoom, right? It, it was it, everybody yeah. just dialed into a, to a Zoom. Yeah, but yeah. They, but I don't recall documents being. Yeah, they were. They were, yeah. Were screen shared. Documents were screen shared. Yeah. And yeah. But but you. We also didn't have. You can only see documents screen shared. There's this big. You can't yeah, see plan on an easel in a room. Yeah. Well, even sitting here, I never see where. Great point. Great point. That's a great point. No, but like Zoom, uh, everybody had the ability to screen, uh, screen share. Like the, everybody's on a laptop, everybody has that same equal ability. I, I worry about the administrative burden that goes to the, the layer that we're adding to. I, I'm kind of actually changing my mind. In, 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 yeah, oh, honestly, the, like, no, like, I'm honestly, in the last one, last one. <laughs> last one. <laughs> Jimmy, I'm oh, here starting to solve the problem. Yeah, right. now maybe really think about okay. this one over the last month. And um, when you think about like the agenda and documents. They are available on the website ahead of the meetings, mm -hmm. you know. And if the public, uh, if the public cares, they will come in. But they're actually enough over here. Yeah. Well, and, and I think, and yeah. I think, and I think, and I think it's to. to the documents are available. We definitely have. Um, oftentimes, like particularly with zoning on the two hundred foot list, once yeah. people receive yeah. notice, they do. Documents are available to come in and physically review. They can review. Do not to up. You don't have. No, that. no, yeah. no. But if somebody was interested, they can request to come in and get. The documents and review the documents. Well, I, guess, to the I guess we, if, if that's the case, if the documents are available here, we're going to walk in and see. Do we? They're always available here. Do we need? Do yes, we need, they they have to be ten days yeah. in advance of the meeting. Yeah. Yeah. If we, if we, I understand logistical issues around sharing documents. So do we even need to do that? I mean, is it sufficient? If it is it sufficient, but we provide notice that for you know around live stream or Zoom, the documents are here, and somebody wants to view them ahead of time for the meeting. Is that sufficient? Or do we have and that switch? You know, yeah. I mean, in a, in a sense, when we were doing these things, and everything was mandated remotely. We had our notice for our meeting set. I mean, you can come in. Yeah. You're, and and when we didn't, and we and when we didn't have that, and people weren't allowed to come in, we made an effort to have everything uploaded, and then you could see it remotely. I don't know that you you do that now. So we we did have a proposed policy, right? And so. What we talked about last meeting was deciding on whether there will be a maximum of one to two board members approved to participate. So we had to decide one or two, right? And then we had to decide, does that person count towards the presence of a quorum? And then uh, and then whether or not the, the, the board member shall not be permitted to participate in executive session, which I, I thought Doug, you said 
it's probably good for them not to have that person participating. The, the so. executive session creates different problems. Number yeah. one, no, number one, if you're going to have an executive session and and you know say Doug Kovac so, is remote, do I have a bunch of people in the back of the area? So we have a proposed draft rule already, and and so I think what Doug is saying is we we were intending to vote on you know these highlighted areas in the in the memo, and so I maybe yeah, maybe we, we should decide whether to. Well, hear, hear me. So, so maybe we should decide as this group what to include in a draft proposal. You can put the proposal together, and next meeting we can actually formally vote on it. That way, we have something. You, you know, I there was there were all due respect to Anna, Sean, and and I think Betsy had some pretty strong feelings about how they wanted to do this as well. And so, I, I kind of feel like you, you know. Can, can yeah, I, I know we we generated this. Can we get that back out to all the members? Um, and this is the one we came up with five years ago, twenty twenty two. Yes, two years ago. I went into I, ar I went into archive and storage, pulled that memo. So can I just, that was our, can I, yeah. can I just make a archive. comment? So sure. tonight there's four people missing. I know, I know, and we're creating a policy and then going out to the public and creating a whole lot of work for everybody for one person to be able to dial in. I just. I'm struggling. Well, we have a policy, right? We voted on having a policy, right? Yeah. So I, I, and I still feel strongly that we should have, it, right? The policy could still be the public access version where we have, and no board just, version where there, where there's right. no board yeah. version, yeah. right? So we could just, I think we're all kind of like not spinning, but like evolve, refining our opinions on this as we discuss it further, right? So I don't know. I mean, I think it really does create a lot of challenges and a lot of unknowns. And, and yeah, I can, I, I would encourage you to do. One thing in this exercise: keep the keep the issue separate. Right. One is public access. One, the one other is, is one is remote access for a board member. The other is yeah. allowing the public or to remotely view what you're doing and how and how we do. It. That's that's that, smart. That, right? Right? There's yeah. because we get we can we can. we could steal everything from council. We could we could do everything. Well, no, no. What I was going to say is we could figure out. Tonight and vote on how many you know how many board members and and we can determine the board end of it and then to take into account your very very valid point you know the optics aren't great but then so then we could then have another sort of policy with regards to the public right and and come up with something that makes sense mm -hmm. given what we have on the I, unless you, uh, I would encourage the board to do it in that fashion. Can I make a motion then to um, allow public access to the meeting, online access to the meeting, including the ability to call in and ask the question? So streaming, not Zoom. Yeah, streaming, not Zoom. So no administrative burden to Chile. Because as we said before, the documents are available 10 days before. So if there was that much of an interest in viewing a particular document, the members of the public could come to see that. I'm thinking lots of times the comments from the public aren't necessarily based on a document. It's typical, typically typically on a visual document. Typically it's a concern they have about a broader issue, access, curb, how close to the curb, et cetera. So they may not need the visual document at that time. I mean, just to state the obvious, they can always come into the meeting right. first. Right. Right. They, if, it's, if it's their neighbor, then they can show up here and be here physically. But just, so let me just restate because I did talk a little bit much. I'm sorry. So again, uh, public access with the ability to ask a question. Every meeting. I, what I, every meeting. What, what I'm saying, would you, would you want that set up? Just because you could give them a phone. I would. Uh, you, could, you could. You could. You could. You could live stream your meeting. This right. is, I thought I said this is what I've, how I've seen it done before. Live stream your meeting. Get a Facebook page. Stream it. You know, whatever whatever technical ability you have, people come on, they log on, they watch your meeting. If and if in that same form, you say if you have a question, call into here. Mm -hmm. Then you're just going to have it's like any any it's like oh, like a switchboard. Mm -hmm. How does council do it? I think the way it works is when you set up the webinar, you allow for the public access, or you create a link for public access, and then what you do is you would embed that link in in the agenda. And have it posted on the website prior to the meeting. 
that um, agenda does go out to certain members of the public that request it. So it would go out to those uh, to those people as well. And if they so then if you wanted to do it, it would be on the website. May I assist in your motion? Sure. May I ask that we ask Sheila to, to find out how logistically mayor and council do their webinar meetings yeah. and try to mirror that. And I think that then addresses both of the concerns. That's the point, yeah, because I thought we already uh, That's what my that. understanding was yeah. from, from that, is that they are available to the public. They create the link when they set up the webinar. Um, the, the public has the ability to dial in, and if they have to share any documents, they are shared through the screen. I think the, I think the council, I think maybe can confirm this, there's also a time limit um, for public questions. So things don't go. I mean, they're not 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 an overall limit, but a per per person time limit on questions is to keep them. Right? I think that it is. They put that that was in recent, right? So yeah, three minutes per yeah. person. They get three minutes per person. Yeah. No, no different than your regular meeting. You're just you're just doing it, you know, whatever. And I, I don't think, think that, that would be overcomplicated. And if, and if you do it in that fashion, then we just have to make sure that we have the ability to set up a webinar for those meetings mm -hmm. and how we're getting notice out to individuals that that's done. We can certainly post it on our. The same way we put out the agenda it would be okay. as a part of the agenda. Okay. I think we should be consistent with the council so that way I members agree. of the public have the same, I they yeah. see every yeah. public I would like to be the same thing. In, in yeah. step in step with them yes. so that because most of the folks are going, well, this is how I did it for council. Right. I'd like to be able to have them the same, same thing. How do it for these meetings, right? Too. So I'd like to amend my motion to say I'd like to follow the method. That the council uses to stream um, public meetings. Uh, well, I will take the lead and shield to make sure we get that information and in. that can be inclusive or excluding um, documents, screen sharing of documents, of all the documents yeah. that go along with the meeting. Well, Mayor and Council don't really screen share documents, do they? Other than the agenda? Uh, uh, again, they screen share. Again, from the comments I heard from board members, your members can come in. Guys, they see the documents. And you can put note in and just yeah. to say for, you know, come to, you know, for a hall to review. Yeah. I would say exploring yeah. documents yeah. to yeah. avoid any problems that someone would say, well, I can't see the documents. Yeah. So yeah, it would be excluding documents. Yeah, be clear in saying that, like, documents are available in exactly. person 10 days before, before, you know, yeah. 10 days before yeah. a meeting. So first of all, you know, if, Please have no expectation of, of you know, a, a screen share. Screen sharing, yeah. yeah. And if I could, should, do you know whether or not that that the information for mayor and council on the webinar, mm -hmm. is there any additional notice that mayor and council do for that? Or is it simply put on the web, on our website that, you know, I believe it's the thing to, uh, to confirm, but I believe it is, uh, as I was told, it's the same way they, you know, seven to 10 days, same way we put out notice, seven to 10 days, the agenda gets posted in the borough, gets sent to the to the public list, gets noticed in the paper, that that, that is where the link for the Zoom webinar is. Here's the reason for my question. As you know, we read our open public meetings mm -hmm. statement. We don't read notice for every one of our meetings. Right. But right now, the notice that we rely upon was published back in January, right? which didn't have any information about linking to a webinar because we're just now looking at it and we didn't right. see into the future. Yeah. I'm just wondering if Mayor and Council did anything different mm -hmm. to um, either amend their notice because we, we could always send out an amended notice that from here on out, mm -hmm. right. you know, for the balance of this year, we're going to allow you to have webinar access and we could we could do another published notice in the newspaper. But again, <clears throat> that's 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 one publication. So I want to make sure that we're mm -hmm. however mayor and council did it that we do mm -hmm. and mirror those things. I, I we can find that. We don't need to burden. We'll find out, we'll get it back, we'll get information to you. We don't have to burden this any further if we go to step two. Step two is board members. Yeah. So say you all. We've got the motion. We've got a motion. Do we have a second? On the public? On the public. To mirror, to mirror what mayor and council are doing with regard to, and then we'll and explain to make sure we yeah. cover the notice on them. Is there a second? If there is no second, it dies for lack of I need second as an alternate. Can I second as an alternate? I'm 
Yeah. Okay. Second. Yeah. See, here's the deal. When we don't have enough members, you're a member. <laughs> second. <laughs> second. Second. Take a roll. Yes. Mrs. Bush. Yes. Mr. Newell. Yeah. Mr. Payala. Yes. Mr. Ball. No. Mr. Nitka. Yes. And Mr. Fletcher. Yes. Mr. Harris. We'll get on that for for a draft policy for you to see that. We'll make sure we cover notice issues. Okay. Issue two. Issue two is uh, you want to have a remote participation policy for board members. I think you're there. What well, are we, what are the nuances? Is it one or is it so? Two? It's one or two members, and so we should vote. I, I I'm going to motion um, that 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 be one member. How do, how do we decide that? Well, I first come first serve to Sheila. I, I think the information that we had. Well, it, I think it has to go. It, through, it said first through come through first serve. Yeah, I think it has to go through the chair. The chair has to know first come first serve to the chair. To so the, the chair, chair, not to the because she because Sheila does the attendance, right? So Sheila. Okay. Sheila, like, like I, I would be the first to. I'm, I'm not going to look. I, I this is going to sound the wrong way, but I, I don't. Yeah, like it's not that I don't care, but I don't right. Like it first come first serve, right? Like if if somebody can't make it, I, I'm not gonna adjudicate like well, who can't and can't. Like it's the first person to pull the lever can can use the the Zoom. The first person to send the email. This is where that's it. Yeah. Let 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 me bore you more than yeah. I usually do. Uh, the bear, here was the proposed draft rule. The Bear Haven Planning Board recognized that a board member may be unable to attend a board meeting due to a medical condition where the, the board member is prohibited from leaving their home due to a medical condition or due to a personal or business commitment. Why not? Okay. Requiring the board member to be absent at the time of the board meeting. In order to assist these board members during these circumstances, the planning board will permit the board member to participate in a board meeting through the use of an electronic device, there will be a maximum of, we'll decide, we'll motion at this point is one board member approved to participate in any board meeting using an electronic device. I want to designate any platform. Further, each board member will be approved to participate in a board meeting through the use of electronic devices, a maximum of, I, I put in two times a year. It's, uh, that's, a, well, that's something know. else we need to decide. Yeah, but I, I was in agreement for two times. In the event the board member has a medical condition that prohibits their attendance at the board meeting or a personal or business commitment that requires the board member to be absent from the board member, the board member must have their participation in a board meeting pre approved, I put in by the planning chair, we can put or designate prior to their anticipated absence. Board member must submit a written request to the chair indicating the date of the meeting and the reason for the anticipated absence. The chair will approve such requests on a first come, first served basis. And I'm happy to do that, but I, I feel like it's better done by the, the board secretary. Yeah, because it's just if I don't get it, yeah. And here and then the caveat is in the event the chair approves a request. The board secretary shall make arrangements to have appropriate electronic equipment available to, at the site of the board meeting that will permit the board member to listen and view uh, all aspects of the public meeting as though the board member were physically present at the public board meeting to include but not limited to witness testimony, presentation of evidence, and public hearing. Board member comments and deliberations, board member comments and presentations. And the board member participating by electronic equipment shall be provided either in advance of the meeting or electronically just prior to or during the meeting documentary evidence and supporting exhibits that are presented or deliberated upon. Blah, 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 blah. The rest is there. And the only other thing was form. And, and, participation. Participation. and what I had written was the board member I had proposed shall count towards the presence of a form and will have voting rights when participating in a board meeting through the use of electronic device. The board member shall not be permitted to participate in the board's executive session through the use of electronic device. That was for other reasons. It's, a, it's difficult to control your environment. Well, the member can control their environment. 
I just use the executive sessions to the exclusion of all of the people. As I say, the problem will occur is if something during a meeting were to happen where you needed counsel, and then that person's not going to be back in. This is where we fell off last time. This is where we okay. died. This is where we, we died last time. <laughs> did, we have, did we have a problem? How many? I, 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 I do. I'm gonna. I'm gonna again motion one, and then hopefully one. we can vote on that. So we've got to. Because I think we got to go sort of stepwise, right? We got to go through each element, okay. and so the first, so first, first thing to decide is: Do we want to discuss it before you make the motion, or uh, make, make the motion? Make the motion. Second, right, we need to discuss. Okay, that's fine. Because then, so you understand Robert's rules of order? Why? Sure. It's 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 formally before you once we get a motion second. Okay. Then we do it. Okay. Is there a mo motion for just one member? There's a motion. Is there yes, a second? We, a second. Second. Deliberations. Talk to them. <laughs> I, I, I don't see any which way you can only have one member. I mean, you're saying it's from medical or business or personal. I mean, you're going to have what, two guys fighting. Somebody's going through chemo. Somebody got in a car accident, two broken legs, and that, there's no wheelchair. You can tell me you can come, but you can't. Or hey, you, you emailed her before me, so you're good, but you're not. I, I, I mean, again, I, I don't see that. Right now, you have four people out. But we also, but we also, but look. We have four people missing. You still have a quorum, and we're all still here, right? So yeah. the joke is that's all we have. We have exactly, we have a quorum, which, have just, which like, is why I'm, I'm just saying, like, just one person. Let's let's because it would have been nice maybe to have one more person here, but you, you know, so that's why I'm just saying, just one. That's my logic is is sort of you, you know, you're. I get exactly what you're saying, right? Totally get it. Yeah, but but I, I I'm just saying, like, again, there's all these people missing today. We still have a quorum. And it's you know, you know and, and, and if still, they want to be involved in this uh yeah. this with Dunkin' Donuts like it was when I was on it for oh, boy. eight billion months in a row. Yeah, yeah. You know, if you want to be involved and you missed the meeting because you weren't here, listen well, then, to then you went and listened to the tapes and read, yeah, read the paperwork if you're interested right. and wanted to vote. Right. Or you just didn't vote next time because you weren't part of that meeting. You know what I mean? Like I think there's a reason there's nine members of the board. Yeah. If if yeah. if we're worried yeah. about everybody being here every single time, there'd be four of us and we'd rule. You know, you know what I mean? And, you, and you'd have a Zoom when you need it, and you'd be here in person when you need it. And I just don't know how you can discriminate. Oh, well, discriminate. I don't know if that's the right word. Choose. You know, uh, choose. Choose. Between choose. And, you know, oh, this guy beat me to it. You know, again, it's the same. Just two yeah. guys on the board going through chemo at the same time, and they can't make it here. What? Hey, you made you 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 got there first. You're in. You're out. Exactly. Like, I mean, it's like meant to be a safety. Bag. I know we have a motion in front of us. Doug, I got a question, a question for you. Are, are the horses out of the barn on having a remote policy for the board? Like, are, are like, are we able to? Right now, my understanding is you said you were going to draft a remote policy. Now you're getting into the nitty gritty. We're going to at least, unless there's a change on the horse, you, you can you can bring that back in. I I would like to, but. You no, the horses aren't. You could decide not to have the policy, or the the policy could be or a board member is not allowed to remote in. That's our remote in policy, and the public is. And here's the ball of the public, and that was our policy. We voted on. We came up, right? Legally, that's I mean, you, you, kind of yeah, you can play. do that because you're oh, you've got a you've got a quorum, you've got a motion, you've got a second. Well, we already had a policy that said you couldn't video in, right? I mean, that was the policy. You can't video in. Yeah, that was the policy. We changed the policy and said, "Well, no, we didn't, we didn't have, have a policy. No, we didn't have any policy. We, didn't have policy. Were, we, got, to, we got to right to this point. Right, yeah. last time. Right, we never had a policy. And, yeah. and then it way. was okay. We're not going to have a policy. But it's like we should, like I think we voted to this so that we should discuss having a policy, right? We got right. to the point where it's like. I don't know. This is, but like, this is why I think we just got to keep it simple, folks. Yeah. I mean, this is again, I think it's, I think it is that simple, though. I think it is one person twice a year. And if you got to let them be a quorum, I'm, I'm willing to do that. I would vote for that. I don't like it, but I would vote for it. But but that's that's kind of, I mean, that's where I am. I get it. I, like, we're good. I, I, I'm okay with the public. I mean, I, I think keep it simple yeah. as you're a board member. If this is in person, meet and show up. Yeah. And you're not here for the primary mode of, the, of 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 this is show up, be here, be right. heard, help. That that's the, the, the know, public side fine. There, there's our problem. Yeah. So I guess I guess to your point, like the primary expectation is that we are in person. It does not hurt us to to have like the details written down to say in the event of the car accident and chemo, 
people who still want to play. This is not giving people a license to, as a matter of fact, I think I would actually go to two members, but only once a year. You know, you know, well, I, I don't know. I, I, I think, I think, I think, I know. I, I, I think the gravity of, of what we do here is, is, yeah, is important I, enough to get here for it. And yeah, that's, you know, I, I, I can, I can't recall in my three years on this, like a, a single night when we didn't have a forum. I can't. Um, I've been out here forever. We always have never, we, like, you know, even tonight, tonight, it came up. So, or, you, know, you were an alternate. However, you you count tonight, right? It's 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 so like we have the failsafe in place to so make this an in person kind of mandate. So but... question: Somebody misses a meeting or you know medical issues, misses two meetings, is that an automatic knockout, or does that like I mean, so if somebody is in that situation, they can't make the meeting. Does that mean they are now off the planning board? Oh no 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 no. no, 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 no. no, no. no so that absence is yeah. like the absence. No, then you're just going to be absent, right? right. And yeah. you, you would just be yeah. absent and, yeah. and not. Yeah, and I would. And but you do bring up very. I would make this an annual. Okay. Well, what, what, I can. I used up my two. I can't ever be absent ever again. Yeah, yeah that's point. that's what you want to. Yeah. Want. Now, your other issue is an entirely different issue. That's not what we're voting right. on. Um, it's you know. One or two, one or two members, however it's done, I would I would probably put it for annually because I don't want. Some yeah, no, no, an annual. Calendar, calendar year, calendar year. Reset, reset. Do you have to do that? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 Mrs. Bush. No. Mr. Newell. No. Mr. Roth. I'm sorry, Mr. Panel. No. Mr. Roth. No. Mr. Nightbird. Yes. I mean, he's dead, right? <laughs> no, I like I like Dave's idea now better. <laughs> <laughs> Make it more respectful. No, I, 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 <laughs> yes. So where did we end up? Four, four. No, no, uh, knows how to know. fourth grade knows how to knows how to yeah you don't have one does that mean we want two or is or no, so that, yeah, oh, yeah. 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 So, <laughs> that motion is done so yeah. does anybody have a new motion or yeah. an alternative we made a friendly amendment to that motion so <laughs> just oh, that, that one's done yeah we're not we're not going to be voting on one again yeah, yeah. this meeting so we have a motion for two Maybe have a motion not to have a remote policy. I'll make a motion yeah. not have a remote policy. I second. There's a second. Motion second. For for. Let me, Scott, amend, let me amend that. Let me amend that. Let me amend that. I'll make a motion that a remote policy is the remote policy we came up with for the public, not for board members. I so we're still having a remote policy. Oh, oh, okay. that, oh that's that's already done. I thought you already did that. That's, yes. This is that's this is now just. So this is two remote policies. Just for record, uh, we are getting your information. You're you're streaming your meetings to the best of our ability, just like mayor and council. That was the direction I understood we were yes. giving. You've got to see that. Then I'm back to not having remote policy for the board. I second. Mr. Portland. So how would I vote if I want a remote policy? If you no, you vote no. You vote no. A no is a a no is is I want <laughs> remote. A no is I want remote. Yeah. What my MTV? <laughs> yes. Yes. Mr. Paolo. Yes. 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 So, just to clarify, can I ask one question in the big room? So if somebody is absent, say there's two medical absences, and then there's, you know, that doesn't, they can't get to another meeting, that does not then instantly launch in proceedings that you're launched off the board. No, no, nothing to do with uh, that. Being, so being part of it. And I will explain okay. that. Thought. That's all, that's, yeah. Yeah. that's all, that has nothing to do with whether you're on. So the person that is yourself. getting chemo, I just want to make sure that you're, you're, you're just absent. You're just absent. Just absent. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's why we have alternates. That's why we have, yeah. Is that your yes? Okay. okay. Yes. Okay. 
You do not have a remote policy. Let me explain your concern. If you had, there's a statute on the books that says if you have three consecutive unexcused, unexcused absences, there can be action taken to review. It's not automatic. That's not the key, is and they are unexcused, which is, and if I haven't done it recently, my apologize. I should have done it also with our other members. Was this excused? You know, if this is an excused absence, that is that does not matter. You know, someone getting chemo, calling and saying, "Look, I need, I, I can't make it." I have there. Uh, this, this is an excused broken. absence for me. The board will write that down as an excused absence. The, the idea behind the, the sort of like the three and out as to whether or not you're there was, you know, what's happening with this minute? Right. Yeah. No contact. No they don't contact. show yeah. every month. Yeah. 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 Going back to, we need our members here. Yeah. yeah. You know, if there's some, if, if they are excused absence, it doesn't fall into that category. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Good point. Thanks. Okay. So um, the, the last item uh, uh, under the administrative <laughs> items for today. Uh, and I, I think this is going to be probably a multi-meeting endeavor, right? And so what, what I wanted to do, uh, or what we wanted to do is have, an, have a, a review of the Fairhaven Master Plan versioning, re-examination history, and future statutory requirements, right? So, you know, it, it came to our attention that um, the, the Master Plan has to be re-examined um, every, every 10 years. Mm -hmm. And so, you, you, you know... It, is it early? Is it is it not? I, I thought it was a good idea that we address a timeline and we talk about a timeline. We talk about what this process should ultimately look like because it's quite frankly taking us three meetings to decide on a video. I can only imagine what it's going to take us to decide on a on a, you know how we're going to go about you know sort of you know undertaking this reexamination, which which I think is going to be something that draws a, a significant amount of attention yeah. from the public right mm -hmm. and and you know we've had a number of different um debates and discussion in here within applications where where members of the of, of our board have, have brought up some some really you know material significant and important mm -hmm. issues with regards to the borough and so you, you, you know, the master plan is the responsibility of this board. And so I, I think it's important for us to get ahead of, of what we're going to have to do. And my, and, and again, I, I want to hear from everybody, right? I, like my intent or what I envision the next, like this meeting and the next, probably the next meeting to be is not so much a discussion of those issues, but how are we going to go about this process, right? We, we, it is a little early, right? We've got until August 2026. But if you look at the master plan, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, almost 10 elements of the master plan itself. And then there's, if you read Doug's memo that, that he wrote, there are all these now statutory requirements that, that belong as part of the master plan. Um, you know, electric vehicle charging, um, climate change. There's a there's a whole host of topics that that need to be put into these master plans. And I wanted to discuss, or what I thought we could discuss was how are we going to address this? How, how are we going to undertake this process over the next year and a half? Um, and and what are the steps going to be? I, I have some ideas that that I, I've written down in notes that I, I'd like to talk to you about. I, I think you, you know the the we have a public hearing on August 24th, 2026 is I, I guess the deadline for the hearing, right? But everything would have to be done by that point. Well, right? yeah, like when you get to that, that would be your adoption. Right. right. When you get to that meeting, it's got to all be done. And there right. can't be any sort of debate or or sort of you, 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 you know, people from the public that haven't had a chance to speak. Right. Like you can't have somebody show up at that meeting I don't want and this. I don't want this. That's too late at that point. Right. right? And so what we want to have is some kind of iterative process that starts, I, I would imagine, pretty soon. Um and and over the course of 2025, the 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 reexamination report gets drafted and all the ideas get incorporated. 
and then 20, the, the most of 2026 becomes about the, you, you know, sort of getting it into the plan in a, in a legal fashion, right? But all the debate with the public and engagement with the public happens next year. And so I felt like, you know, we needed to get ahead of this and have a, a plan for how we were going to, you know, how are we going to attack this? And so it's a, it's a, I'll, I'll just, I'll be quiet and let everybody else yeah. kind of talk. Just to yeah. ask a question because sure. I'm new. Yeah. Um, the adoption of the updates is purely a uh, function of the planning board, or is it the mayor and council? You are, and you are going to coordinate, yeah, mayor and council because I mean to be crass about it, they're the funding tools. You you are you are joined at the hip with mayor and council, and that's why I say if you're if you're planning this, you are going to need the assistance of a plant that is going to, you know, dedicate, dedicate resources based upon what you want to accomplish. And so it is, it is our function to do the re-examination. That's one part of it. The other is the master plan update. Let me explain. Usually you coordinate those. Otherwise it's two separate hearings, right? If your master plan re-examination, which has to be done, you know, every 10 years, re-examine the master plan. And if you didn't do anything more, you didn't update your master plan, what you'd have is your master plan would be out of whack with what we said it should happen. So what you're usually doing is here's our recommendations, here's how the master plan should be modified, one hearing, two in a sense, two separate, two separate functions, doing the re-examination and re making recommendations for the master plan update. And then once that's all approved, and then you know the scribes, the, the nerds of the world. So they, they write in the master plan, they cross things out, they make it, they put them, okay, now our master plan is consistent with our re-examination, and then our ordinances going forward should reflect what we want to see change. When we when we say we want to see, you know, take a look at our old problems. Here's what we wanted to address. Well, sometime during our next 10 years, we address those. Maybe you check it off. Maybe you say we still need to do this or we need to tighten our ordinances. It's it's our role to do that, but our funding source to have, if you take a look at your last re-examination report, you're going to see, you know, there, there was a planner on board. That plant planner went down and said, okay, here's what you need to have to update your things. Here's what uh, last year's, last time's goals were. Here's how you ha have either met those or having. We've already done some updates to our master plan. And, and as soon as I tell you, you're gonna say, yeah, I guess we did. Our affordable housing, that was part of, when we got the settlement, part of what we did was to amend our master plan to make sure that those things were now in there. So unlike some other municipalities, we maybe don't have that. That aspect of it was already done. Master plan re-examination, minimum 10 years. You can periodically do other elements if you want them, so it's not all at once. But to answer your question, we're going to be working with mayor and council as to you know bringing on a plan. We want to tell them what I'd like to hear the plan. As I said, last time it was it was Mike Sullivan's group, CCH. It's not the same plan we have for the planning board. We have two planners. We have the planner, I, I think, which is CCH, and then we have um, higher rule for affordable housing. Right. So I, I, I believe that that's right. Right. But CCH was the person who, yeah. who did the best, you know, that I, I imagine they might have a step up doing things yeah. and that, but again, that's your decision. Um, well, they are our planner, right? Yeah. So, so they, so they yeah, yeah. involved. they're going to have to yes. be involved. Like, like we wouldn't put, put out the re-examination for bid. We have to have a planner at all times. And so I, I, I wouldn't would, recommend that you do it, but yeah. you're gonna, again, you're going to have to, that wasn't, I don't know that that was in the retainer. Right, there would be something separate, I believe. Yeah, right. fair enough. I, I think and you're going to have to talk to them. You're going to want to hear what they what they think we need to do. And the ordinance changes is a completely different exercise, correct? That happens. That yeah. happens in that next After, ten year right, cycle. Yeah. So that's, that's right. there. Okay. Yeah, that's yeah. the governing body's responsibility is to well, pass I mean, ordinances that comply with or part, are are aligned with the master. Plan. Part of what the other guys that are not here tonight brought up in regards to. The downtown district, you know, being 10 feet off the road, and these existing right. buildings are further back, and they have lots in the back, these have lots in the front, and so on and so forth. You know, putting that in the master plan is again, this is like the summary. The master plan is like a summary of what we're doing. You know what I mean? You're going to have to recommend yeah. an ordinance change 
to council in order to get that to reflect what we just did here. Yeah, or, else, or, else, or else at least the purpose of what they were concerned about is a waste of time. You know what I mean? Then we're just going through a normal master plan thing. There's nothing to do with what they were talking about. You know? You've seen it come together this evening in a little microcosm. There is, there is no zoning and planning without a master plan. Mm -hmm. And then as we flesh things out, when we do get a new development regulation like we did this evening, now that you've got the plan and you've got the zoning, does this latest ordinance that we have with regard to stormwater management, is it consistent okay. with the right. master plan? Right? You're now, we've got these little elements up there. Now they come to fruition. As we go forward down the line, when we're trying to do our checkoffs, we look at what our problems were. Did we resolve them? Have, if they've not been resolved, is it still a problem? What ordinance provisions do we need to put in there? This is the, the master plan is the skeleton. Yeah. Flesh it out in the next 10 years. And it can get go, it done. It can go either way. I mean, you, you, so, you, you, can have, you can have a ordinance and the master plan doesn't agree with it, and you can change the master plan to agree with the ordinance or vice versa. Yeah. A little harder to do, to do that. It's yeah, more yeah, cumbersome. I'm, but I, I'm, I'm just, just saying. you're right. Right. Then now we can all agree on these 10 things, and the master plan doesn't reflect that. And mm -hmm. we, during a reexamination, adjust the master plan. I'm wondering if the uh, first order of business is to contact our existing plan and ask them kind of step by step what we should do. Because here I'm wondering, in the 2016 master plan, there were surveys of the townspeople, et cetera. Yeah. So will we be doing that again? So, so, so what, what I the scope of right. So, so what, what I was hoping we would do over the next two meetings is to come up. This is our process to drive, right? We're we're the board. We should drive this process with significant oversight and input from legal and and the planner right like so like because we're all volunteers right we don't i'm not a land use expert none of us really are except Doug. and so you you know like i, I but it's our process I, I think it's our process to drive right and so I, I what i what i don't think any of us want is for this to become a, a sort of a perfunctory you, you, you know check the box kind of exercise that's run by the planners and 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 legal. I, I think I know some of the people that aren't here have a, a more expansive view of of kind of what they want to do and ideas and things that need to be incorporated in in the master plan. Um, and and so I, I think it's our responsibility to drive this process with guidance from people that do this for a living, right? And if you brought, if you brought, if your planner were here tonight, you'd say, okay, what's this going to cost? How long is this going to take? Mm -hmm. Their, their question or their response back to you, it's not a legal question, it's, it's, do you like your master plan? Yeah. So what do you, what do you want to do? That, that's why I, I, you know, we, we, Doug and I spoke about having the planners here and I thought it was premature to have the planner come obviously to this meeting, yeah, certainly sure. premature probably for the next meeting. Oh. And so what, what I was hoping that we could do is, and I, I, I jotted some notes down about how I, I think a, a really skeleton, you know, you know 10,000 feet above process would work. And then we should start to put some meat on the bones in the, you know, through the course of this meeting and the next meeting, and then have somebody look at that and decide if we're ready then to have the planners come and and you, you know then fully flesh out a process that we can then kick off. Uh, does that I, again? I'm not the expert here. That this is kind of how I'm thinking of it. And usually, step yeah. one, yeah. From what I see is you take a look at your last reexamination report. What were the problems? What what did we identify in the last reexamination report <clears throat> with things that we needed to address? I'm not saying that there aren't new problems, right? But what were the old problems? Did we address those? If you haven't addressed those, are they still of importance to us today? Mm -hmm. You know, we will, we will carry them forward. Then you get to, okay, what are the new problems? And some of the new problems will be driven by your data. Has your population changed? Has the, has the demographic of your population? This is where you'll get in, where a planner will come in and say, you know, you're popular, you, you've, 
population. If, 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 if I am if I am losing population, you know, or if I'm gaining population, that impacts on you know well, what are our housing needs, what are our parking needs. If I am if if my demographic is changing to be a, a younger population, what do we think the younger population? That doesn't mean to the exclusion of our seniors. What what do our seniors want? Do they want, you know, are there things that we would do by way of, I'm not even talking about a commercial problem with parking, so we have resources. You've done a lot of things. You have, you know, your bike, you know, bike lanes, those things that can incorporate, CV on top of parks and those things. Are they adequate? Since the last time we examination, we know you, you know, you changed your police headquarters. I imagine there was probably something like that in the examination. Mm -hmm. exactly. There was probably exactly. something yeah. about your affordable housing obligation. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I'm not saying it's checked and done, but we've made some movements towards there. The reach out to those groups to the public is what do you want to see? And that's when you get into okay, took care of some of the old, some of the old are still a problem. What are some of the new things? And then you get into, you know, we'd like to see things set back. But that's going to be a study from your planner by way of saying, okay, something as simple as your block composition. You know where your large lots are, where your large blocks are. You know, that's how you sort of why the houses there carry different things. Is that working? Is your infill working? I've heard sort of the mantra since I've been here ago. We're not necessarily interested in wholesale redevelopment, but we really would like to see infill development, and if that infill development is going to be there, we'd like it to be consistent with the character of the residential mm -hmm. neighborhoods. Look at the old, did we finish it? And then what else do we need to do? And what does our master plan need to bring it up to date with regard to legislation and those types of things? So we better shut up. No, that's good. No, that's a good framework. Sure. Mm -hmm. Now, is that, is the previous review it's, it's on. It's, there's, yes. another, there's another. I, I would I would encourage you to 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 review it, not to commit it to memory, but you're going to see they're going to have gone back a couple of re-exams. This was a problem. This was a problem. I have looked at re-examination reports in certain municipalities where it's still you know it's still a problem after three three re-examinations. If you're at a seashore town, uh, parking. Yeah, but when is parking a problem? So, yeah, and, you know, summer, not so much. But now, is it a bigger problem because people are now working remotely? Those destinations, where it used to be just destination in the summer, that's now year round. That's what people are living near year round now. You know, so now that changes your parking, it changes your circulation patterns, and where it used to just be a problem. You know, after the maybe after the was never a problem at the beginning of the shoulder season or after the show, it's now a full time problem. And they have to come to how we address it. And you guys know what your problems are now. I mean, on your holiday weekends, do you go through your town and try to park these spaces like, like I do in some of the spouses I work in? Yeah, okay. Is that a single parking space available? Is that an issue? And I would divide it. What are the issues, if any, with your residential? What are the issues with your commercial? Uh, what things, and I don't mean to simplify, what things do you like about your town? Where would you like to see those mirrored? Um, maybe I'm jumping out of order here, but your memo <clears throat> in regards to. I just highlight it. No, 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 I get it. But, uh, you know, whatever. Cannabis leg legislation. You, know, you had all these rules, you had to do whatever. We put an ordinance in saying you cannot have cannabis operations here. Yeah, yeah. Yep. So we're we're square there. Yep. But the stuff you put on here has to be a part of the master plan now. Is that no, that no, no. no. I, I'm saying these are these are changes in legislation I, that you might want to oh, okay. be aware of. I read it as it had to be addressed. Well, okay, and, and the reason I'm asking is is I get down to electrical bill supply and make up ready parking spaces. And all the requirements and 15% and this and that. And you know, you got to be president here in X number of months, and the whole vehicle mandate and all that's going to go to the wayside. I, I got you. Here, here, yeah. Here's what no, it may very, very well. Yeah. Here's, here's what I'm saying there is, there should not be any ordinances unless they're reflected in your master plan to the extent that you now get a bonus in your parking. 
if you've got an electronic vehicle station, is that reflected in your ordinance? If it isn't reflected in your ordinance, it's because it wasn't reflected in the master plan. That's that's going to be that's statutory. That if you're going to do that, you get that bonus. Again, you should at least address that because it should then guide what our ordinances are going to be down the line. Right, but this was. Yeah, but this is the ML and UL. So, so this is the state law. I, I, so I was just saying, right, so does that mean we have to? So it, that, means, it would, that means it's coming in now and people are getting those bonuses. I don't know if it is on on your books. But, but I'm saying, do we have to have this in our master plan? Is this like mandatory? I don't think you have to have that in your master plan, but okay. you should address it so that it's at least recognized so that when someone says, Can, well, this, is, this is my special reasons. This, I'm, I'm providing electronic fields. I not only get a parking bonus, or I'm going to try to tie that into special reasons. You don't have to. I just wouldn't want to make it mandatory, you know. No, I, I, um, I'm not making it mandatory. These are things like Mike talks about, right? You know, putting this burden on these people trying to build stuff or do stuff around here, and all of a sudden you're going to say, hey, 15% of your spots have to be a vehicle, electric Charging, vehicle yeah, ready. Yes, yeah, so charging is, stations. Like, I, I would not I mean, try to be. This was more or less. Here are some things that have changed since your last oh, meeting. Oh, yeah. And if it, if, like you said, not an issue for us. Not an issue. Yeah. Yep. This, okay, I know what this, this, if, if we already have it revised in our SI standards, if we already did it, fine. Right. Check off. We're done. I didn't know if any of this was law mm -hmm. mandated. Yeah, so it has to be added to our master plan via law. No. So, okay. So, so as as I read through all this, right, like I, I thought that you, you know this we'd have to organize groups, right? And I, I thought those groups would mirror the elements of the master plan, right? Or, or at least somebody on the board would have to head up, you, you know, or at least lead the development of each of the sections yeah. of the of the master plan, right? And then we would start the process with a survey, right? So we would go out into the community. I think there's a survey on the website that was used in the last time. And so we, we would we would have that, that, that would be the start, right? And we would do that as soon as possible and get that survey out there, right? And then we get that data that comes back from the survey and then can organize the planning board around the survey results, right? But also, I know members of the board have ideas and um, things that they believe should be addressed. And so, you, you, you know, there's the recycling element, there's the land use element, housing, cir uh, circulation, facilities, utilities, historic preservation, which was new, uh, rec and conservation, which I think was also new, recreation conservation, which was also new as, as of the last re-examination. And so somebody on the board would have to head up each of those elements. And maybe there's elements here that don't require much of anything, right? And so you could you leave those, but you, you, you know, and then it would be that board members, I, I think, responsibility to, to then, you, you, you know, look at the data that's in the survey, come up with the, the three or four principles that needed to be added to or amended in the re-examination, and then we have to lead sort of public hearings, maybe not hearings is the wrong word, but but public engagement on those ideas, right? And and um and then decide whether they get included into into the yeah. Event. I think the other step that that I would add there, maybe it's already assumed, but as you're gathering your data and things like this, you're working with how do we where do we make these changes in the master plan? Right. It seems like our land use element. We've, you that would have to be a, a planner, lawyer, yeah. sort of, that, that's where we would- I want to tell you, the lawyer, other than walking them through your process, I, I, I really don't have that much of a role other than making sure, keeping on your timelines, right. making sure the notices go out for the public hearings. Because in terms of, I mean, it's a master <laughs> plan. It's what do you want your community to look for? Well, you don't want a lawyer telling you what your community should look like. No, no, no fair enough. No. I meant for the or draft thing. Or saying, or right, or right. Right. Well, down the line, the ordinance is probably going to be drafted by council, council, yeah. mayor's council. Yeah. It'll be our recommendation to FDC, yes. then they draft. Exactly. And then we'll take a look and make sure they're consistent. And, and then it comes back to yeah. us, and then we well, make sure right, that review the, the resolution. Yeah. Yeah. So, I'm sorry, just the, the order, make sure I understand. So the proposed order is survey. 
survey is a, is a would be a broad survey, right? The one that's on the website now right. that they use for the last one is pretty broad, right? It covers a whole host of of topics. Okay, and then and then we put the draft together. Then we so so we get that survey right. back, right? And and then we'd say, okay, all the different suggestions that were made in the survey we would assign to different elements of the master plan. And then each of the board members would have to take an element of the master plan and, and drive what changes are, are necessary, needed, would have to vet those, those changes with the public uh, and the planner, and then, you, you know, come yeah. back and, and make change, you, you know, then it gets- Yes, yeah, so my, my only comment is, I mean, yeah. the, the survey, obviously, depending on how the survey is drafted, it could be prescriptive, right? In terms of what type of feedback we're going to be getting from the public at that, you know, right? It's going to it's going it's to tell us a lot. Well, I'm saying, well, but it can also be it also depending on how it's drafted, it, it may not tell us enough. Right, also, right. depending on how the questions are drafted, it could tell you what you wanted to tell you. It could tell you. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. so I guess we should consider. I mean, we can consider certainly doing a survey, but just consider whether or not before we start drafting. We also make it the public hearing or two. Well, we're gonna I, even before we start drafting. Yeah, so we don't end up going. Fair, so we don't. Yeah, that, that yeah. end up making a U turn or Could left turn. Survey right. results, you know, and then right. and, and that's a great idea. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I'm just saying the first cut. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Miss kind of, you know. Yeah, so I'm just. I mean, I don't want. I'll say no, like that way, like wasting time. No, no, I hear you. I this is why we gotta have a discussion of what the process should look like because I think that's a great idea actually. Where you you know we 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 take the survey. And then we 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 have a, a meeting, a public meeting on here are the survey results. Here's what the results told us. You, you, you know, and we're gonna you know we're gonna design a a, a, a reexamination process around these suggestions. Right. And then know, we'll and, additional and get additional feedback in that in, in at that year. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I think right. that could be yeah. process step. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. To your point, like the survey is it's like yeah. some you know multiple choice thing. People are, you know, it's like <laughs> right. without like the subjective, you know, ability to kind of say like, well, have you thought about you didn't ask about this, but uh, right. and also when you have the public together, you know, they're feeding off of each other a little bit. So it may create ideas that yep. individually folks may not follow, including including ourselves. I think before Great. the next meeting, could we all have copies of the questions sent so we can look at them on the website? They're on the website. Yeah. So um, sometimes I find websites hard to navigate. So is it at a quick place that we just put Yeah, if you go um if you go to questions, if yeah. you go to uh, I forget this one what's on the I can find it and just send I mean if you can send the link out that'd be great. Can yeah. you, is that a survey that was developed by the planner or by I, the planning I, board? I don't know. That? Where I, the and is that, that the original? Survey? Is that because it says here 35 questions? Is that the original 35 questions that were developed? From the previous one, I mean, it was, it, there was also the restaurant survey done in between. It was pretty comprehensive and beyond just restaurant issues, which is also has you know I think some good information and has some Look editorial it. commentary, a lot of editorial commentary actually. I think only you were able to see that though. I don't know if the public was able to see that. Mm -hmm. So yeah, Sheila, if you could just send us a report, appreciate that. that. Yeah, yeah, that'd be great. But what again, just just uh, backing up or or rising up, or zooming up, out, zooming out. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> so the the uh, so the um, the the public hearing to to sort of approve it has to be done by August twenty fourth, twenty twenty six, right? And so. I, I think June 2026 is when you would need to have the final draft. And then I didn't now this is not what's in in his in Doug's memo, but I was arguing in my head that we would have to be kind of done by January of 2026, I would think, to then have all the sort of like, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it depends, I, it depends it, on how, as I said, it depends on how big the change is. Yeah, yeah. Because you would need the rest of, you yeah. you'd need that time just to finalize everything, right? Like, like I'm not, I don't know what, but but you would need that. I mean, just you know, getting you know, certain deals. Like, we you say, get to a certain point, and then there's the, that last mile stays forever. Could right? we do even August 2025, one year before the 
but the revision is due, the reexamination is due. We could have like we could try to do all this like we're starting in the August meeting of 2024, right? For we yeah. real meet on the phone. Then we'll like, give us a full year, August 25, and then the full year following. Yeah, that's fair. So that's it, fair. you know, yeah. give us the extra three yeah. months, four months, yeah. you know, as opposed to you know, yeah. pressing in for new board, yeah, an organization meeting and things like that. So right. Could could we schedule then? We'll say we'll finalize the questions that would go into survey questions by the August meeting. I think that's that's because that I think we need the planners to help us. Yeah, that. Yeah. C C M was the planner. C C H C C H. Excuse me, I got hard and roll my head. Yep. Um, do you think if we ask C C H to set a timeline for us based on their experience in doing this? Um, well, first of all, are we going to? We examine using somebody other than CCH. Doug mentioned that they're not. This is not part of their. I I don't know. I don't know. So I mean, I guess there's a question because we do use whoever uses the planner has done this, does this yeah. all the time, and maybe they have off the shelf. They can say, no, I, I, yeah, my like I said and before, they, and they so, last. Yeah, and I I, so I was okay. kind of coming at it from from the fact that we have like we should drive this as a as a board. I, I thought we would get to a point where we had some agreement on an oak, like a, a very high level timeline, and then bring the planners in and say, here's what we were thinking. Can you help us put some meat on the bones here in terms of what needs to be done, how it should be done, maybe how long that usually takes, and have them kind of then maybe fill in the blanks for us a little bit. I again, I'm not like, yeah, I'm not the expert here, but that's I'm not how I'm saying. Saying. It's the thing to just feel like, here's your package, start filling in blanks. Here's your, here's your, here's your Gantt chart, and you can do and when. Because I like David's comment about, you know, having it one year before. I, I love goals like that where, you know, you've got your, yeah. you know, you've got your, your, your twin all set up and ready to go, your analog ready to go, play out. And I wonder, so I got me thinking, like, I wonder what best practices are. Which you know, fair enough. Yeah, maybe. So I, I don't know. I, I will tell you, my, my experience is until they understand how big a task mm -hmm. you're going to be giving them, it's, right. it's going to be difficult for them. So I I reached out to CCH and said, you know, this isn't going to be seen on a bill by me. I don't need to see it on a bill for the client either. How long? It's like the best I can do right now is walk, you know, I'll walk you back from your due date as to when you should see final product. And then I don't know how long you're going to put your surveys out for. Is it, is it two weeks? Is it a week? Right. It changes. How many other things need to get done? And does it really, is it, are there significant changes to each element? I don't think there's going to be significant changes to your resource in, inventory. I think we just did that not too long ago. Some things won't be that heavy lifting until you see what that task is. You're really dealing with a little bit of an unknown. So we're going to go back to Fred's recommendation, which is, you know, break it down by element, you know, as one of as sort of the major categories. That's those, that's those, that's where the thought goes, right? There's a process for addressing those elements as a whole within, you know, the overall plan with those elements and how much we want to crack them up and look at them is going to be the big issue. So, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. Yeah. Um, so maybe we do so back, you know, reversing a little bit. Maybe we sit down and have a whiteboarding session with each element and talk about, you know, in the room who's got, you know, I think we got to do that in, in view of the public, right, Doug? I mean, I think that's one. If you're going to have, if you're going to have a full quorum, yeah. But I mean, I, there's no reason why. You, you, I mean, I wanted sure. sort of the 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 sort of discussion of the process, how the process was going to go, to happen in front of the public. Mm -hmm. I, I just think that that's how it should be, right? Like, mm -hmm. I, I don't, I mean, unless anyone has, I don't want to have executive sessions or outside meetings where we're sort of determining, I, yeah. I don't know that, that any of those topics would fit within an executive session. Yeah. I mean, but yeah. The, sur the survey, come up with survey questions. Yeah. That's so we're not going to do that in public. Well, right? well the, I think that the planners would do that for us. Like, they would design the survey because they've probably done it many times before. I think that's where we have to start I because agree. I don't think we, I think part of our purpose is to represent the town. So I think we first need to find out what are some things that the town would like to see. And then we take that and then we could start adding our own expertise, but really driven by what the town sees. So I think we really need to start with the survey, survey questions, I guess, and then get the survey out. Your start is to review the re exam. I suggest review yeah. the re exam yeah. last time in, in your mind's eye. 
is this still a problem? If it is, how do we re re Yeah, I, I think so, so the homework as it's a good like I said, you can cross some of these things off. Right? Yeah, the homework for the for the next meeting, right, is I think for everybody to read the re-examination, read the survey, and and then you you, you know decide you know in general what progress we think has been made where we feel like there might be areas that are going to take longer or be a heavier lift than than others um and i'll put together you, you know a, a very high level process um that that we can share at, 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 and then talk about like at, at, then, then we'll have like how big of a of a lift by going through the re-examination report, we'll see how big a lift it actually is. Um, and, and then be able to, to, like I said, I was hoping by the end of the next meeting, by the end of the July meeting, we'd be in a position where we can share this high level timeline with mayor and council. And then also think about, you know, look, here's what we're thinking. We want to bring the planner in now and, and recognize that that may involve a cost of, of bringing the planner into review our timeline and, and and get their you know get the planners the experts feedback on on the timeline and and what it what it will entail and, and then we can go from there but i i don't think you, you, you know i i think given that we're all volunteers i I think there is a little bit of urgency here. I think we're, I wouldn't say we're early. I, I feel like we might be kind of like, this is the right I think time. Fair. I think this is take a lot longer. This is going to take a lot. Yeah. yeah. And we're going to want to have, I think, you, you know, just judging by what I've heard from, from the group over the last two years, we're going to want a lot of public engagement and, 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 you, you know, the way the police station was done with all those open houses, I thought it was really Get, you know, quite well done, um, and and sort of the way, you, you, you know, I'm sure it wasn't, you, you know, a. I'm sure there were bumps along the way. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't see all the how, how it was all done, but I I know they did. I, I just felt as a somebody that lives here, I thought it was just really like there were all these meetings, there was mm -hmm. lots of engagement, there was lots of back and forth. And you, you, you know, I, I assume people felt heard, or I hope they felt heard. Yeah, no, I agree. That's why I was saying yeah. I think the public hearings before we yeah. get too far down drafting makes sense, in addition to the survey. Yeah. Yeah, because we had surveys and public hearings for all the, for that for the police department. Yes, yeah. that you know, it's their combination. Yeah. Okay, so I think we got to, I mean, I, I wanted to have an executive session um, to address a couple of, of matters, but I, I think we'll wait till we have a more full, full board to do that. Okay, sounds good. Okay. Um, I will, um, oh, well, I would comment on, on anything we talked about with regards to the, the re-examination. How does that sound to, to you as a, as a member of the public? Uh, I would like public sessions. I don't know whether you'll get people out, but you can give it a shot. I'm going to have to go home and dig through and see which components I have and whether they're up to date or not. Um, thanks, everyone. Thank you. Uh, make a motion to adjourn. Make a motion to adjourn. Second. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Yeah. yeah, that's good. Well, for like, you know, somebody who's going to suggest whiteboarding publicly for the public. <laughs> 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 <laughs>